Hello everyone, this is Mitch and welcome to my next Kerbal Space Program capsule. So today is going to be a part one of two about the nav ball and the markers specifically for this episode. So without further ado, let's talk about the nav ball. So this is a classic situation on the launch pad. This is a stock vehicle and you're looking at a nav ball here in the middle at the bottom. What do you see? Well, you have the attitude marker here, which points the attitude of your spaceship. However, this is relative to your current controlling module. So here you have control from here, but this spaceship can also be controlled from a clampotron docking port. And if you push this, suddenly you see this. So whenever you're making a new spaceship and launching and controlling it, make sure you're controlling from the right module because this affects essentially how you perceive the nav ball. So if I'm controlling from here, then the front of the craft would be the horizon over here. However, if I turn the craft, the attitude marker to point straight up right now, it's going to point me you know, in the wrong direction. For example, if I push spacebar right now and I try to pitch the vehicle like this, oh, it says I'm pointing up, but I'm not. So, let's revert. So, always important to keep in mind that the nav ball is relative to the controlling module. So now we're back and since we have reverted we are still controlling from the cockpit which is giving us the proper direction for the spaceship. Now let's hop over to another spaceship to talk about the different markers you will encounter on the nav ball. And we are now in orbit. So what markers can you see once you're in space? The most important one and you will see it even before you are in space, is this one, this yellow-green marker, which is empty in the middle and has three pins. This is the prograde marker. This is essentially where your spaceship or plane or whatever vehicle is currently going. So since I'm in a perfectly, well, almost perfectly circular orbit right now, it's pointing exactly at the horizon because I'm always going perpendicular to the planet. So this would be pointing away from the planet in the blue zone. And the brown area is the NLG for towards the ground. So right now I'm pointing directly away, spinning, spinning. And now I'm turning to face towards the planet. So the prograde marker is especially useful, of course, to get into orbit and to escape an orbit, escape a celestial body, and it's generally a really good indicator. It's really useful because it's where your spaceship is going, logically. The opposite of the prograde marker is the retrograde marker, and it's the same color except the three prongs or whatever are facing in different directions and there is an X across in the middle. This is the opposite direction, so if you fire your engines this way, you will slow down compared to wherever you are going right now. So if I were to fire retrograde while in orbit, well, my orbit is going to go lower and lower until I finally crash into the planet. So these two are very useful. Uh, retrograde is very useful for re-entry, for slowing down to get captured by another celestial body, and of course to land because it's pointing you basically where you need to go to slow down. The next two, I'll skip the blue cyan ones for now, are the normal and anti-normal markers. These are pink, purple triangles, one with prongs or lines and one without them. These are essentially to shift the plane of your orbit. So. Right now I'm in an equatorial orbit and the white line we can see over there is the orbit of the moon. 
So if I was trying to get to the moon, right now I'm on the same plane as the moon. So I just need to accelerate to extend my orbit to reach the moon's orbit. And if I get there at the same time as the moon, I will get an encounter. However, if I try to go to Minmus, which is this light purple line, suddenly it's not on the same plane. If you look at this, these lines cross. They cross the orbit of the moon. So if I just extended my orbit, there's a good chance I would miss Minmus. I wouldn't get there, actually. I might cross its orbit, and it's possible to get an encounter like this, but it's going to be much more difficult. So what you do to get on the same plane is you burn either normal or anti-normal, depending on where you are, at the ascending or descending nodes. The ascending nodes and descending nodes are essentially where your orbits intersect. So if I target Minmus, right now its orbit is now yellow, and I zoom in here, and now Kerbin is hiding the line, but if you drew this yellow line across Kerbin, the nodes for ascending and descending are essentially where my own orbit crosses the orbit of Minmus. So if you burn in the right direction, which is either normal or anti-normal, at one of these nodes, you can eventually shift your orbit to be on the same plane as your target, or wherever you're trying to go. And then we have the blue markers, the cyan ones, which are radial and anti-radial. These will always correspond kind of to left or right, since we're in space there's not really a left or right, but you can see here one is going to point inside my orbit and one is going to point outside. These are not for what you'd expect. These are for small corrections because if you're trying to make a maneuver using exclusively radial and anti-radial, it's going to be very inefficient. So what you want to do is just adjust an orbit using these. For example, if I was on a different orbit or if I wanted to change my orbit right now, I could shift the position of my apoapsis slightly to towards the planet or away from it to make a burn later. The other use is when you're getting an encounter. So, for example, I'm going towards Minmus very fast and either for a gravity assist or just you know, to tweak the direction of my orbit, if I want to spin clockwise or counterclockwise or anything like that, I can use radial and anti-radial to slightly adjust my orbit to my trajectory to go either left or right from Minmus. And then when I get there, so you have to do this before you get there, when you get there, you can burn at periapsis and either end up with a clockwise orbit or a counterclockwise orbit. So this is the main use of the normal, sorry, the radial and anti-radial markers. Then you have your target markers, target and anti-target, which basically tells you the position of whatever you have targeted. So this could be a vehicle, this can be a celestial body, it depends. So right now, if I look at my well, Min misses on the other side of Kerbin, but if I put myself right there, I'm pointing towards my target. Now, this is mostly useful for docking, really. Technically, if your prograde marker is exactly on top of your target marker, then you are on a collision course, which is bad if it's a planet, but it's good if you are trying to dock. An anti-target is basically pointing away from the target. And the final marker is the deep blue one, which appears only if, sorry, my view is skewed, if you put a maneuver node. So if I say, oh, I want to accelerate here, prograde, and change my orbit so it looks like this, the orange line, then 
when I get at the point of the maneuver node on my orbit, if I fire my engines while pointing at the blue marker, then I'm going in the, di in the direction of my maneuver node. And that's all the markers. So in the next episode, I will talk about all the little buttons and all the different things you can do with the navball, which are a little bit more complicated. So if this has helped you, please leave me a like, subscribe, comments are welcome, and until next time, bye bye.